that Avante Adams, the Baltimore trade hype is picking up after the Las Vegas Raiders star receiver requested a trade. We talk about how realistic it is, if Adams could truly be a target for the Ravens, all that and more coming up next to you on Lockdown Ravens. You are Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostreicher of Ravens Wire, here with you as always on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for being here today, making Locked On Ravens both a part of your day and your first listen each and every single day, free and available for you on all podcasting platforms. That includes in video form on YouTube, where you can like and subscribe to the channel, in audio form, where you can follow along and subscribe there as well for five days a week, plus more of daily Ravens coverage each and every single week. Today's episode of Locked on Ravens is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 of bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Midweek edition, we turn the page to week five as the Baltimore Ravens will face off against the Cincinnati Bengals. Big divisional matchup, first of the year for the Baltimore Ravens. But here today, we have something else to talk about. And that is Devontae Adams. The Ravens played Devontae Adams in week two of the season in that Las Vegas Raiders loss. But yesterday on Tuesday, Devontae Adams requested a trade from the Las Vegas Raiders. So... Obviously, buzz has started for which team you could go to next. And the Baltimore buzz is beginning to heat up a little bit as they've been identified as a team that could potentially be in the sweepstakes alongside, obviously, a ton of other teams as well. And people speculating, well, which teams make sense, which which teams could be in the running. So we'll talk about Devontae, what he would bring to the table for the Ravens, how realistic it is, what the Ravens could and should give up for Devontae Adams, and, you know, if, if... we should really be expecting anything of this front for the Baltimore Ravens. Then in the final part of the show, we'll flip over from the Devontae Adams conversation and the trade conversation in general, and just talk about the Ravens finding their stride a little bit, continuing to dive into the Buffalo game a tad and and kind of do final takeaways from that and how they can continue the momentum moving forward. So as always, we got a lot of Ravens content to talk about. Let's dive into it here. Devontae Adams, again, big storyline. It, it, th- this whole situation has kind of escalated very quickly. Before the season, he was uh, he was identified as one of these guys that could be a potential trade candidate, but I think it's materialized quicker than most people anticipated. Antonio Pierce and the organization seem to have turned on Devontae, and that evidenced by he was at, Antonio Pierce was asked about Max Crosby and Devontae Adams called Max Crosby by name and referred to to Devontae Adams as number 17. And now Adams says he prefers to go elsewhere. So the big question is, with Devontae requesting a trade, is that trade going to be to the Baltimore Ravens? Well, we know that for Lamar Jackson, he has not had that stud star wide receiver one as a veteran. We've seen teams go out and get A.J. Brown for Jalen Hurts, Stephon Diggs for Josh Allen, DeAndre Hopkins and Marquise Brown for Kyler Murray. That list goes on and on and on. Lamar Jackson hasn't had that. You know, the Ravens should have capitalized on Lamar's rookie deal further when they had the opportunity. Now it's a lot harder to get one of those guys in the building because of Lamar's big contract and all the other big contracts that this team has. So the big question for Devontae Adams is obviously, one, what's the talent level? He's up there in the age. He'll turn 32 the day before Christmas. The talent's still there. He's still a stud number one receiver. You know, no no one should be questioning Devontae Adams and what he brings to the table in terms of on-field production. He would instantly, if you're talking about from a Ravens perspective, instantly boost this offense, instantly become that wide receiver one. And, man, let me tell you, a trio – of Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, and Devontae Adams all in Baltimore would, would just be like just, just chef's kiss. It would be incredible. Adams has had a very storied career over the course of his career, which spans 11 years. He has 890 catches, almost 11,000 yards, 10,990 to be exact, in 96 touchdowns. His best season came in Green Bay in 2020 
touchdown wise when he had 18. His best season yards wise was the next year in 2021 when he had 1,553 yards. And he's put together in, let's see here, five of the last six seasons, not, not including this one, obviously, but five of the last six seasons, he's had over a thousand yards and has turned himself into one of the best receivers in this league. It's, it's a no-brainer in terms of could Devontae Adams make this offense better. It, it would skyrocket the team. And out of everybody who's going to be available at the trade deadline, it seems like, wide receiver-wise, I think Devontae Adams is as good as you're going to get. So we can talk about the Amari Coopers of the world, the DeAndre Hopkins of the world, and a couple other names that could be available. But Devontae Adams is your clear-cut, best wide receiver that's going to hit the market. And so for a Ravens team that is now two and two, that is hitting their stride and wants to continue that the next question, because the first question we answered about, is he still good? The answer is 1000%. Yes. The next question is what he fit and what the Ravens want to do. And I think obviously when you're talking about the passing game, when the Ravens throw the ball, you want to have the best receivers you can out there. Yeah, Devontae Adams would be a fit for what they want to do in the passing game. Now, does he fit their full identity? The Ravens' identity is a run-first team. So, as we've said before, it takes a specific type of wide receiver to want to come to Baltimore and want to play here. Even with Todd, that was more of a thing when Greg Roman was the offensive coordinator. But we're even seeing it now with Todd Munkin, where, you know, Justice Hill was the leading receiver last week with six catches, you know? Zay, Rashad Bateman, all those guys, they didn't, they didn't have a ton of catches. And that's just the type of, that's what it's going to be. Where even now, Lamar's top weapon of Mark Andrews has had two weeks of zero catches. The Ravens have thrown the ball 32 times over the last two weeks. And I keep just referencing Josh Allen because that's who they played last week. Josh Allen had 29 attempts in one game. So the Ravens have been part of that. I do want to put it out there is it's been positive game script for the Ravens. So they haven't had to come from behind and air the ball out over these last couple, honestly, last three weeks, they've been in positive game script. The only game they were in negative game script was week one against Kansas city, where they did have to air the ball out to try to come back and win that game. But the last three weeks they've been ahead. Now they haven't necessarily finished ahead in all those weeks. See week two against Devontae Adams in Las Vegas, but that has contributed to them not needing to throw the ball as much, but that's what the Ravens want to do. So if you're talking about paying a guy and giving up assets for a guy in Devontae Adams, that they're, they're not going to be cheap assets. How much are you going to want to utilize that player? You're going to want to utilize him a lot. You're going to want to have him be a focal point of your offense. Right now, Derrick Henry is the focal point of that offense in terms of the run game. Obviously, Lamar is the focal point, obviously. I'm not trying to say he's not. But at this point, if you're talking about skill position player outside of Lamar, Derrick Henry's your focal point. Devontae Adams comes in. That doesn't change, right? Devontae Adams, I'm personally, I'm for making the move. I want to say that. I'm for making the move because, first of all, the more deserves to have a guy like Devontae Adams on the team. He just, he just hasn't had that. They haven't had a caliber of Devontae ever in Lamar's tenure. Second, I mean, how do you, how do you defend that offense? I mean, seriously, how do you do it? If Devontae is willing to buy into a role and say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to get 10 targets for, you know, catch 150 balls in the Ravens uniform per season and have 10 touchdowns, 12 touchdowns. If he can buy into a specific role, I think it could be a match made in heaven. Now, would he buy into that role? I don't know. Honestly, I'd probably kind of find it unlikely that he would. But how do you defend the offense if Devontae comes in? That to me is like, ooh you know, you're thinking about it and you're like, okay, you got the run game with Derrick Henry. And obviously if that gets going, you can work play action and you can have somebody who can work over the middle of the field, can dominate his matchup one-on-one -on -one, is a good route runner, can be a three level receiver, but you have to pay attention to him. In an offense, you already have to pay attention to Lamar, to Derrick Henry, to Mark Andrews, and to Zay Flowers at the very least. And that's not including guys like Isaiah Likely and Rashad Bateman, et cetera, et cetera. You add Devontae into that group, and you can work the short passing game all you want. You can work the play action all you want. You can play bully ball all you want. But he is a player that is, he's going to come into a run-first offense with the Ravens if that is the case. He would need to sacrifice. He would need to sacrifice. 
And there would be multiple sacrifices Devontae Adams would have to make if he came to the Ravens because I just mentioned it, right? Devontae is 32 years old. And we'll talk about his contract situation coming up in a couple minutes in the second part of the show. But his contract is one where the Ravens would need some help from Devontae and they would need to find the room for it in some other ways as well. Now, are you investing that much money in a position that is not maybe your biggest priority? The Ravens have approached that position, obviously, outside of the Odell signing, which was kind of an outlier in terms of money given to that position. They've approached it with rookie contracts, with smaller signings, smaller vet signings. I wish they would break that trend personally. But based off of their history, who, who knows what they would do in this situation. But I think the Ravens could use one more piece in their receiver room. We've been saying it all the time here. I've mentioned guys like Cortland Sutton and others who have been available potentially. You know, we talked about Brandon Ayuk and why that wasn't necessarily super realistic because he wanted that big money. Hey, this is his first big extension type deal. Devontae has had his contract. So maybe he'd be willing to take a little less, but I'm not going to count on that if I'm the Ravens. And so coming up in the second part of the show, we will be talking about the realisticness of the Devontae Adams potential trade to the Ravens and if the Ravens should even be interested at all in general. We'll also talk about what it could take to get Devontae Adams in terms of draft compensation and maybe players as well. So be sure to stay tuned, playing to talk about here on Lockdown Ravens. First, the show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. And I love going on Prize Picks, seeing everything they have to offer. They have so much that you can do over on Prize Picks. There is something for everyone, and I've certainly found plenty to do on prize picks you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks sign up today and get 50 dollars instantly when you play five dollars you don't even need to win to receive the 50 dollars bonus it's guaranteed prize picks is the best way to win real money this football season which players are going off which ones aren't make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on prize picks so for the Ravens for Derrick Henry, maybe for this Bengals game, you want to pick more on his rushing yards for Lamar Jackson. Maybe you want to pick more on his passing yards. Prize Picks has it all. Download the app today and use code Lockdown NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app today and use code Lockdown NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. We're back for our second segment, Locked On Ravens. Kevin Allstriker still here with you on this midweek edition of the show. Appreciate everybody for being here today. And again, making Locked On Ravens both a part of your day and your first listen each and every single day. We bring you five days a week of daily Ravens coverage. So we do not take breaks here on Locked On Ravens. Monday through Friday, we do 6 a.m. episodes. Regardless of the week, we always do them. We've been doing them forever, five plus years for me. And episode 1,348 consecutively. For me here today. We also do bonus episodes sometimes on Saturdays and on Sundays during the season. We'll have game day episodes as well as instant reaction episodes after every single Ravens game. So if you have a friend or a family member as well who wants that daily Ravens coverage, be sure to send them our way over here on Locked on Ravens. Really appreciate all of the support. Let's get back into the Devontae Adams conversation. We talked about just who Devontae Adams is, how he'd fit in, if he fits the Ravens' identity and whatnot. You know, he's a wide receiver coming into a run first team. We had that whole conversation. But now I think the other question here, it's obviously the money. It's obviously the money. So I have the specs for Devontae Adams and his contract. Again, when you look at specs for contracts when it comes to trades, it's different because you don't send all of the cap hit money over to the team that's acquiring the player. You look at the base salary. That base salary plus some of the bonuses go over to the team. So it's not like when you're looking at everything in that contract for what the Raiders have in this specific instance for Devontae Adams, not all of that would be going over to Baltimore if they were to acquire him. Now his cap hits are hefty. <laughs> Nothing short of hefty. $44 million each season in 2025 and 2026. This year's cap hit is 25 million. I believe at the trade deadline, it would come down to about 14 million and the Raiders would have to pay some of that. But when looking at the base salary, 
it just skyrockets. So I'll, I'll bring up the graphic quickly, a very quick one that I made here for Devontae Adams and, and his contract situation. So after this season, there are two years left on Devontae Adams and his deal. Actually, I guess I should have clarified this in the graphic. Apologies. It's $35.6 million per season for Devontae Adams, his base salary. So that's what we're looking at here. The cap hits for 2025 and 2026 are $44 million, but the base salary is $35 million. Now, you also have to factor in the bonuses. So he has a $500,000 roster bonus. And he also has a $100,000 workout bonus in each of those two seasons. So those are those $600,000 in bonuses that you see there, 610 to be exact, if you want to, you know, add it up and do the exact monetary value there. So really, the Ravens would be on the hook for about $36 million each season. The Ravens don't have that kind of money. They, they just don't. We can be honest, right? They do not have that kind of money. I'm, I'm quickly pulling up how much money they have right now. So right now I believe they have about $4.3 million in cap space. And in 2025, the Ravens are currently projected to have $17.3 million in cap space. So obviously if you're going to bring in Devontae Adams, you first of all have to restructure the deal or you have to bring him in with the intent to cut him after this season. And I think for Baltimore, if you bring in Devontae Adams, you would probably want to have him in Baltimore for the next couple of seasons at a reduced rate. Now, would Devontae Adams be willing to take a pay cut? Because you talk about other teams across the league, there are a lot of teams that have the money to offer Devontae Adams a nice little hefty extension to add, maybe tackle in two years at the end of his deal to make him have even more long-term security or just a team that could take his contract on outright and not have to have him take a pay cut, and maybe that's appealing to him. So you look at teams like the Commanders, teams like the Patriots, apparently the Browns are interested, the Steelers who were interested in Brandon Ayuk alongside the Browns, they're interested. We heard about the Commanders. I mean, this is essentially the Brandon Ayuk sweepstakes again, just with a different player. Commanders, Patriots, Steelers, uh, Browns. But the team that's favored by a lot of people right now is the Jets. Obviously, there's the connection between Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers, and the Jets certainly would benefit from having another wide receiver there. The Ravens, there are a lot of factors going against them in this situation. And so, you know, for a team that doesn't really have a ton of cap space to make a lot of moves and would have to bend a lot of pieces to make this thing work, I, I don't necessarily know if it is the most realistic thing in the world. And I'll tell you my final answer right at the end of this segment here. But the cap hit is not what you're looking at. So they actually, again, it's not the 44 million. I've seen that number floated around. It's the 35.6, obviously, with the bonuses added in there. But the Raiders, and look, I, this does, in my opinion, end in a trade. I know people are talking about, oh, well, there are still paths where Devontae can stay with the Raiders, this, that, and the other. I, th I think this is done. I, I think he's getting traded at the deadline or before. And I, I don't think this is salvageable based off of what the reports are between Las Vegas and Devontae Adams. But look, we know how Devontae feels about Lamar Jackson. That's something that is going in Baltimore's favor, is Devontae has a high level of respect for Lamar Jackson. He has looked at Lamar's film to uh, better his game. And that's something that isn't taken for granted. So if Devontae says, hey, I want to play with Lamar, let, let me work something out there. Let me take a pay cut. I'll take the, the role cut, whatever you want to classify that as. You know, Devontae could play his cards that way. But I just don't know if that's what he wants because he's still super talented. This is not a guy that we're talking about who's washed. He's still really, really, really good. And that's why I want him in Baltimore badly is because Lamar Jackson deserves to have somebody on this roster, a vet star number one receiver like Devontae Adams, something he never got when he should have during his rookie contract. But the money is not the only thing we have to talk about here. It's also the compensation. The reports are that Las Vegas is potentially willing to move off of Adams, engaging interest, and that the compensation package will look, would look something like a second round pick plus additional compensation. So I know everybody's first reaction to that is to go back to the Roquan Smith trade, which was a second round pick, a fifth round pick, and linebacker AJ Klein for Roquan Smith. There are a couple of differences. Obviously, Roquan was plugged right in the middle of that defense and was young at the time. I think he was 
what, seven years younger than Devontae is right now, maybe six years younger than Devontae is right now. I'm not saying giving up a second plus more isn't worth it. Like, I think if you want to bolster your offense and add that literal final piece, that, you know, last infinity stone in there, it's not a first. We know the Ravens won't trade firsts, but they proved, I think, a lot of people wrong, myself included, a couple of years ago when they did trade a second for Rope One. When they believe a player is worth it to them, when it makes sense to them, they go out there and they make that move. But again, is it worth the money, the contract, the compensation to go out there and bring in Devontae Adams? I personally would do it. Do I think the Ravens do it? No. Do I think it's realistic? My final answer is no. I, I don't. I just think there are other teams out there that maybe would be willing to offer more than the Ravens because they understand the contract situation, teams that would be willing to pay Devontae Adams his full contract. The commanders are the prime team for me. The Jets obviously make a lot of sense. The Ravens make sense based off a need, but they also need money down the line to extend guys. They need money to extend Kyle Hamilton. Tyler Linderbaum. You could even start looking at Zay Flowers potentially in a couple of seasons. And if Devontae is tied up through 2025 and 2026, I mean, I know those extensions aren't going to kick in like this offseason or anything. Like they still have time for those guys. But if Devontae is like, I'm only coming if I get a, more years and money tacked on, I think the Ravens would be out. So I don't really expect this to happen. Like obviously it's something where we can speculate and talk about it and imagine what it would take for this to happen. But there are so many other hoops that would have to be jumped through for Baltimore to get this to happen, where it, it sounds so good. It would be incredible if it happened. But at the end of the day, I just think there are too many of those hoops to jump through. And Brian McFarland, Raven salary cap, who obviously is all things Raven salary cap, great expert with the cap, said that, look, if the Ravens wanted it badly enough, they, they could find a way. But they would need the Raiders to eat some of the 13.5 or million. Yeah, that 13.5 remaining salary that he has this season. And the Ravens would need to extend his deal because, again, he's due the $36 million over the next two seasons. And obviously, he'll be 32 by the time this season ends. So by the time 2026 is done, he'll be 34. So are you paying all that for a 34-year-old receiver? At the end of the day... I, I just don't see it being realistic for the Ravens. If we want to talk realistic, my target's DeAndre Hopkins from Tennessee. I, I think DeAndre Hopkins is the guy that I would target if I were the Ravens. Adams would be awesome. Hopkins is not the player that Adams is at this point. But, look, DeAndre is still a heck of a player. And I think, to me, he's the guy I would target if I were the Ravens. But coming up with the final part of the show, we'll move away from the Devontae Adams conversation, talking about the Ravens finding their stride over these last couple of weeks, or at least, I guess, this past week against Buffalo, and talking about how they can continue moving forward. Stay tuned, a lot to get to on the show. First, the show is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. So for the Ravens and Bills game, obviously Ravens dominates. If you picked the over on Derrick Henry rushing yards, you're probably living large on FanDuel. Or if you picked the Ravens outright, congratulations. Just visit FanDuel.com. That's FanDuel.com. We're back. Our final segment, Locked on Ravens. Kevin Ostriker still here with you on this Wednesday edition of the show. Really appreciate everybody again for being here today, making Locked on Ravens a part of your day in your first listen each and every day. For all the everydayers out there, really appreciate you. Those who listen every single day or almost every single day means the world for all the support that I've been given over the years. If you're new to the channel, welcome in. Hopefully you'll stay a while. Hit that like and subscribe button. Follow along in audio form, video form, however you decide to listen or watch our content. And if you're somewhere in the middle, thank you for checking in again here on Locked on Ravens for your five days a week of daily Ravens coverage, plus more. Now, the Ravens have found their stride. At least you can say that after they blow out the Buffalo Bills 35-10. to 10. Just an incredible display of football. Hey, four quarters, four quarters of football. That's really what you want to see, where we saw for three against Dallas, we saw for three against Las Vegas. The issue there was they didn't finish in either of those games. Obviously, they got the job done against Dallas, but didn't really feel that good. This one felt good. And I think we showed, we, or at least we saw 
a lot of things that this team did that they can take forward. They can move forward with. And I want to start, we've talked a lot about the offense, talked a lot about Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson and everybody. I want to start defensively for this team. The Ravens defense through week four. Number one still, still the best rushing defense in the league. Number one in yards per attempt, 3.0. Number one in total yards at 231. The passing defense, obviously with the way the game went on Sunday night, got better. They were tied for 26th in passing yards per attempt. They moved up to tied for 20th at 6.4. They were dead last in total yards given up through the air. They have moved up to number 29 with 1,030. And I do want to say this for this defense. We talked about it with the game script that the Ravens are in. The game script that the Ravens are in defensively, I mean, teams have to abandon the run on them. That's why they're so good, and that's why their total yards total is so low. But how I judge things, again, is with the yards per attempt because in the opportunities that teams are running the ball against them, they're stopping them, and they just aren't running the ball really at all because they have to abandon it so early in the game. So obviously, naturally, with the total passing yards, with teams airing the ball out and trying to come back, trying to make up that ground quickly, they're going to give up more total passing yards. But they are not as bad as that 29 number is. The tied for 20th is the one that I would rather go with because in their opportunities, they're they're limiting a little bit more than the total yards would indicate. But defensively, we've seen with Zach Orr, he's not as aggressive as a blitzer as we've seen. Obviously, Don Martindale was a whole another level of aggressive with his blitzing. Mike McDonald took the foot off the gas a little bit, but still he was showing some other stuff. Zach Orr is somebody... It's something we praised Mike McDonald for when he was here. The calculated blitzing. He's not overdoing it. But when it happens and when he does it, it's effective. And that's what you need to do. Rattle these quarterbacks. Rattle these quarterbacks. So for guys like Nandi Matabike, Travis Jones, Adafe Owe, David Ajabo, Kyle Van Noy, et cetera, et cetera, those guys are balling out. And that's a big part of why this defense is so good. It's because quarterbacks have to run out of the pocket. They're flustered, and that leads to more mistakes. But Josh Allen, it seemed like every other play, he was running to the right side, running to the right side. You only really had one big play off of that. You don't want to allow these quarterbacks to stay in the pocket because your pass rushing your secondary goes hand in hand. John Harbaugh talked about that, and it's true. And it seems like last week they finally put that together. I think they finally put together their offensive line as well, where Voorhees is injured. They put McCarry in at left guard and Roger Rosengarn in at right tackle. And it seemed like maybe that just, you know, it, it put the light bulb off in John Harbaugh's head, maybe. Of uh, First of all, maybe we can do away with the rotation for good. Second of all, I'd honestly keep McCarry there. I, I would. And it's nothing against Voorhees. I don't think Voorhees did anything wrong. I just think it's circumstance where there's nothing McCarry did to to lose that job. And I, I would rather trust the veteran. And then you look at right tackle, Rosengarden has been incredible. I, you play your best five guys, and not that Voorhees isn't in that conversation, but the way that offensive line went out there and performed on Sunday night, those guys deserve to be out there. They're also learning to lean into their identity more, keep the foot on the gas. And obviously we talked about that over the course of the last couple of weeks, but John Harbaugh said that they made an effort to do that, which hundred percent was the right decision this week and why they won by so big. That's, that's some of the stuff we saw last year with the 30 point, 40 point wins over the course of the year. They need to do that. But if their run game is working like it was in week four, early against Buffalo, the bills got scared and the Ravens took advantage of it. You have to take advantage of the fear in your opponent. So when you have an 87-yard touchdown run from Derrick Henry, the perfect play call was play action off of that, and Todd Munkin did it. Todd Munkin did it. A little rollout play, 10 yards as a flowers. Buffalo was so scared about Derrick Henry in that run game, froze the entire defense. They can freeze the entire defense so often this entire year in heavy personnel. If you want to go three wide, you know, if you want to put somebody in a slot, they, they have so many personnel packages they can run. but. Their identity is they're going to out-physical you with the line. They're going to run the heck out of the ball, and that's exactly what it should be. So it was a really encouraging thing for this Ravens team that over the first couple of weeks we're kind of wondering and we're thinking, all right, well, we know what this identity should be, but are they going to really lean into it? Are they going to really do it? Well, they did it in the biggest way they possibly could in week 
four. So I, I, I love it. I love it, especially because Lamar spreading the ball around resulted in less of a, oh, we know who, who the ball's going to go to if you're a defense. It's more of a guessing game for the defense. And, and I love that where everybody's contributing. You know, guys are bought in, even guys who aren't getting active touches, right? Mark Andrews, one target over the past couple of weeks. Com- well, not combined. It's two targets combined, no catches combined. But that's a guy who's laying out on the line blocking right now. It's just guys buying into roles. That's what's going to make this team successful. They all have done it. And I think they can continue their momentum of that way as well. But that's all I have for you here today on Locked on Ravens. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, be sure to subscribe, like the video in, in video form, and also follow along in audio form. Subscribe there as well. Coming up tomorrow, more Ravens content and coverage. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And I'll see you right back here tomorrow on Locked on Ravens.